Hello, everyone. Um, it's very good to meet you all through this virtual space in this not so um, ordinary times. I'm Jin O, oh, and I'm a doctoral candidate here at MSU. Um, in this past year, I've had the privilege to work as an RA for um, Dr. Kathleen Fitzpatrick, um, who's the Director of Digital Humanities and I've been a part of the Humanist, uh, Humanist Commons team working behind the scenes of this wonderful platform that um, I will be talking about today. Um, first, um, let's look at the poster, if I can share it. Okay. Um, first, I would like to say that this poster is made with some pre-existing uh, materials by Dr. Fitzpatrick, and that's what you see mostly on the left side. Um, today, I'm here as a kind of like an ambassador of Humanities Commons, and I want to introduce what Humanities Commons is and what I've personally gained with engaging with this platform. Uh, I had very little background in digital humanities, and I'm a bit embarrassed to say in front of you all who I looked through the abstract and all the projects sounded amazing and very um, professional. So I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't even know what an open source site meant before I began taking this role. Um, before being an RA, I actually only heard of Humanities Commons a couple of times. I didn't have an account, and frankly, I didn't know what it offered. Um, yeah. Uh, and the community engagement project that you see on the right side of this poster um, derives exactly from that. Um, as a non-expert, interested in the age, interested in online presence, but not really knowing what to do with that. Um, I was really interested in this grounded experience of mine. So in addition to my role as managing user enrollments and checking uh, repositories, I wanted to see just generally what people thought or, or felt about digital online scholarly um, network, such as Humanities Commons. Um, I've heard my friends talking about how overwhelming it is, um, how overwhelming the growing importance of online presence is for scholars, um, especially for those who are in the job market, and how much time it costs to dedicate a section of one's professional life to like, being updated with all the things that's going on online. And I was one of that person, and I still have concerns or anxieties about how to allocate um, my time or how to present myself professionally online. So our team developed this survey that was distributed earlier this year, um, investigating people's thoughts about online scholarly uh, engagement. I wanted to see how much people dedicate themselves to the online scholarly communication um, the reasons for doing that, and if they don't, why are they not doing that, and how we, uh, the Humanities Commons team, can help foster a better environment um, that is kind, um, inclusive, and non-threatening. So as a person who only opened a Twitter account about a month ago, um, I was surprised to see that um, as you can see in this um, graph here, about like 85% of the respond, uh, respondents said that they use online social networking platforms um, such as Twitter, um, Facebook, or Humanities Commons, or ResearchGate um, for scholarly and professional purposes. Um, and you see in the, uh, on the right side of the graph, um, the quotes that I have directly um, pulled from the respond, uh, response, the responses from the 
Life Survey. So they say uh, it gets them outside their usual network. It gives them the opportunity to learn about new publications or discussions or research projects in their field. And the third one is kind of uh, was uh, was one of the unique answers, and it said that I have the sense that more and more professional discussions are taking place online, and that it's part of my responsibility as a scholar to take part. Um, so it has become almost a feel integral to us scholars living in the 21st century to engage in online digital um, community. And learning about humanities commons and online scholarly communities made me realize that it's not only about, you know, only for publicizing your work, which it does, but it's also about collaboration and sharing insights and inspiring others as well as, you know, giving access to those who might not have access because they are independent scholars because there are students whose institution don't have access to many articles. And I come from that, uh, that kind of institution and it was really frustrating as a master's student to get a hold of a book or recent journals um, that's written in English or Spanish. Um, and, you know, as an international scholar from South Korea, and I know for a fact that there is no such open source nonprofit platform in many other countries. And I personally think it's more helpful that we scholars share our interests and ears of hard work with another scholar who's interested in your work um, without charging such attention. And um, I also know many humanities scholars in Korea who delve into digital platform or utilize um, digital software um, investigating popular medias or things like that without knowing that this network exists and that's why I'm here today to um, publicize this wonderful project and to let you know that this is a great initiative. Um, if, I can uh, if I can direct everyone to this quote on the right side below the selected result title. Um, this one is also taken from an anonymous respondent. Um, I don't know who this is, but if you are there listening, thank you for this because I love it. Um, it says, democratic eradication of stature to better enable to get inside another's point of view to a certain worth, validity outside of prejudice. Um, I think this quote just summarizes beautifully how my experience of humanity commons has been. Um, I joined Twitter and with you know all its good and bad, I've found inspiring people, archiving information, um, sharing knowledge, and spreading others' work. And I think humanity commons offers just that um, in addition to the actual archiving happening inside the platform. So, um, and I feel Humanities Commons has more professional vibes as uh, than, than Twitter, um, as the documents and files that you deposit and that you will see and be archived in the platforms are with library quality deposits. And uh, I'm the I'm the person who's in charge of um, clearing and checking if all the deposits are in fact library quality. So it's a bit more um, professional. Um, and you present yourself uh, as a scholar in Humanities Commons. But still I experience uh, Humanities Commons as a personal networking platform. Uh, with many scholars I really wanted to talk to when I was in Korea. Um, and I don't know if you've experienced this with students in online classroom, but people are so much nicer when the communication happens online and, and when they are not anonymous. Um, I personally like to write rather than to speak, um, partly because of my personality and partly because of my identity as an international woman of color. And conferences and real networking sometimes scares me a little bit. 
Um, but Humanities Commons is just a space for me to, de to delve into the communication without, you know, for me having to worry about appearing professional or worrying about my identity or worrying about my grammar or pronunciation or things like that. And I really enjoy the time I take to respond to discussions on discussion board on Humanities Commons, exploring other uh, other scholars' profiles to see what people are doing. Um, you know, as the quote says, it's to a certain worth validity outside of prejudice. And it's wonderful, I think, to have a project such as Humanities Commons that's led by scholars, and that's open access and not trying to make money out of you and your work. Um, yeah, so now going back to the left column of the poster, um, to put it briefly, Humanities Commons is a network and a repository site. Um, it's a project of MLA, Modern Language Association, in collaboration with MSU and um, CUNY uh, Graduate Center and Columbia University Libraries. And it's been and is still supported with uh, Mellon Foundation and NEH. It's an open source, which means uh, the original source code is available, and non-profit network um, that supports and are supported by scholar um, and societies of humanities instructors, researchers, and practitioners across the discipline and around the world. So what can you do on Humanities Commons? Um, even though there are so many features that I can talk to you about, um, today I'm just going to focus on some of the things that I uh, make the best use out of. So first, you can make a profile and build and maintain your professional online presence. Uh, mine currently has my institution, uh, when my next talk is, a bit of a little bit narrative of how I got into DH and how I got into um, age studies, which I do. Um, and it's kind of like a visual CV, but with a narrative uh, you'd have on your personal website. But for me, using Humanities Commons to maintain my profile works because it's more accessible and it can attract more people. Um, I do it all the time now that I'm familiar with the platform, just looking through how other scholars are defining their um, professional identity in like three sentences and it's, it's really fun and it's really informative uh, before you start like googling their work you go into their profile and see what they're doing and it's um, it has been really helpful for me and the second thing in, that you can do is to join groups uh, to discuss common interest and there are many groups on Humanities Commons site like digital humanities medical humanities, early modern, popular culture, music studies, and you'll be surprised how many familiar names are members. And you can create groups yourself, um, and you can join groups, and it will make you be, uh, be updated of current um, call for papers, upcoming publications, and just to know what other scholars in your field are doing and let others know what you're doing. And finally, you can upload your work um, and access others. Um, so unlike a few other websites that charge you to download an article, um, Humanities Commons is totally free. And you can make your work more visible by depositing, uh, depositing it to Humanities Commons. And if you deposit your work, you will get your own DOI and even get indexed by Google Scholar, um, which I think it's a really cool feature. And Humanities Commons allows this sharing network to happen not only within this local digital humanities communities, but also to around the globe with almost 30,000 monthly visitors coming from over 100 countries around the world. And this um, image shows how many um, users we get and visitors we get. And although the site is predominantly in English, and I know it's the conversations um, the developers are having right now, 
um, although it's uh, in English, um, the, the deposits, the files are in more than 20 languages. So people from around the globe are accessing this site to share work, their work, and to um, browse how others are doing. And my colleagues and advisors from South Korea, they were more than thrilled to hear about such a platform. And it, um, as a master's student, I had to actually pay like $10 an article every time I downloaded it because of my institutional constraints. Um, yeah, so there are many other features in Humanities Commons I didn't have a chance to tell you all about today but I strongly encourage you to browse through the network and see what others are doing and how you might make the best out of this lovely platform. Um, as any experiences are, uh, when I first browsed through Humanities Commons, I thought it was, I don't know, weird, maybe a little bit difficult to handle, and I felt like a stranger landing on a new place, um, but it's worth the exploration to delve into the network. And in my experience, the Humanities Commons net, uh, community is really nice and supportive. And I think that's kind of a sentiment that all the digital humanities um, have and share as a common, but Humanities Commons as a platform, we are very open to feedback and we welcome suggestions. Um, I know because I'm in many of the meetings that every day the team behind Humanities Commons is on call, on meetings, developing another project, developing another feature to better foster the community and to contribute to this world of humanity sharing and inspiring um, new work. So thank you for listening. And you can find more information about um, how to use Humanities Commons on the MSU Global DH Symposium website on the drop down menu on virtual conference information. Um, and I couldn't be, unfortunately, I couldn't be here today in time, but I would love to answer questions, um, discuss anything, um, receive feedback about Humanities Commons. So leave me a comment on Humanities Commons site, or you can message me on Slack. Thank you.